Welcome to episode 60 of FountainCast, a bi-weekly podcast brought to you by the Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce, striving to be your one-stop fountain of information regarding your local business community here in Fountain Hills. I'm your host, Jill Hayslip. Be sure to stay tuned after the podcast to hear about upcoming Chamber events. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Scott Summer. Scott is our brand new chair of the board of directors for the Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce and is the principal consultant at Summer and Associates, in addition to volunteering his time with Four Peaks Rotary. Welcome, Scott, to the show. Thanks, Jim. It's uh, awesome to be here, and I've been watching these for a while now, going back to when Paige used to do them, and I'm excited to finally have the opportunity to, to do one for myself. Oh, it is my pleasure. As soon as I heard that you were the new chair of the board of directors, I knew we had to have you on. <laughs> so first, I would just like to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about your board experience and how you ended up on the Chamber of Commerce's board of directors. Sure. So I've sat on the board now for about four years. I've just come into my second uh, three-year option on it. And it was kind of an interesting story, to be honest with you. Uh, I was asked, uh, I, I participated in a, in a uh, work study session that happened for a number of years, a number of years ago, and it was led by Audrey Lett and uh, um, Rosaria Kane, excuse me, from Noodle. And it was kind of a, uh, how do you like your chamber membership type kind of study session? And I have a tendency to be pretty truthful. So I was very truthful in how I liked my chamber membership. And ironically, out of it, some feedback went to Scott, who was the CEO at the time, and I was invited to apply for the board. And I did not actually get in the first time. Oh. And I was devastated, totally devastated. But then once I saw who did get in, who, you know, one of them was Bill Hines. So it's kind of like, well, all right, that, 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 <laughs> that, that kind of makes sense. We'll let that go. We'll let that one go. So, um, Great, great class got in that year. I applied the next year and, and did get in. And my, my number one goal in serving on this board is making sure that we do everything possible within the walls of this building to support the business community out there. That's, that's my number one goal. Absolutely, we love to hear that. On the, uh, other than the Chamber of Commerce, I'm sorry, board, where else have you been involved in town? So I, uh, my wife and I, about six or seven years ago had a discussion and we were kind of thinking, you know, we're not doing anything in town to, to give back. And we, we wanted to change that. Both of us were, both of us have upbringings in, in serving and giving back. So we, uh, my first involvement was actually with the Four Peaks Rotary Club in Fountain Hills. And I, I actually made a list of all of the service organizations in Fountain Hills. And I told Ash, I said, hey, I'm gonna sit, we're gonna, we're going to hit every single one of these organizations. That's and, a long list. It is. It's, <laughs> it's an incredibly long list. Um, wonderful organizations out there. I went to one meeting at Four Peaks Rotary, which was over at Fountain View Village, as, as you remember, and I just fell in love with the club. And, and I stayed, and it's been, a, it's been a very, very rewarding experience. I've been in there almost six years now. Wow. And... Uh, a couple of years uh, after I entered the club, they invited me to enter the leadership track there. I did. We had um, just a series of very unfortunate circumstances with, with a number of our leaders. So my tenureship, although only was supposed to be one year, I actually ended up having to move into the role um, almost six months early and then complete my full year. <laughs> And then our, our next president, unfortunately, uh, was unable to fulfill her term, so I, so I ended up staying an extra year, and we just finished up at the end of June. And it's been an incredible honor. The club has grown by 40%, Wow! which is just incredible. During a time of COVID, yes. it has grown. Um, we've picked up 18 new members. We're at 57 right now, which is awesome. And it, that's, where my, that's really where my passion lies. Um, it's a great organization. This year, we're going to give out over $100,000. Oh my which God. is just unbelievable and a lot of that money is staying right here in Fountain Hills and that is very very important so when we come knocking on your door asking for <laughs> donations asking to participate in the golf tournament that's that's a big reason that that's a big reason why we do that it's for, for the betterment of the community some of the other small um, roles that I played uh, I served on a uh, pastoral uh, transition committee at one of our local churches here um, also participated in the Vision Committee that's led by John Kraft and Jerry Butler. Great, great organization. 
uh, graduate of Fountain Hills Leadership Academy class two and a planner for class three. So we, we try and try and get out there. And then of course the chamber, which I absolutely love and adore. That's great. You've definitely planted yourself in some of the key um, you know, organizations here in town that all give back, all yes. want to see Fountain Hills better than it is today. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but there's always room for improvement and expansion. 100%, 100%. And really, we're, we're some, some believe that we're kind of a society on the take right now. And we're, and we're really, my families, we're really trying to kind of do our part to make sure that we're, we're giving back wherever we can. I think that's wonderful. Uh, tell us about your new business and sure. how you got involved with that. So, Summer Associates is a small consulting firm, and what we do is we specialize in service delivery models and leadership development for small and mid-sized companies. And I speak to a lot of my colleagues and business owners out in the community, and, and they look at me and they say, what is service delivery? And that's when it kind of clicked that I actually am in the right field. And you know, service delivery is uh, it, it's the component of your business um, that defines the interaction between you and your customer. Okay. And everybody says, well, yeah, I know what customer service is. I'm nice to my customers, and and that's great. There's there's nothing wrong with that. But some statistics to share with you: fifty um, percent. Uh, 50% of the customers will increase their purchasing with a specific brand if they feel that they're receiving great service. Sure. Which makes sense, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. 67% will actually increase. So the point being is that there's a, there's a lot of revenue that's being left on the table because business owners sometimes have a hard time understanding what it means to deliver quality service. The more concerning, uh, the more concerning uh, stats that, that lie out there is that 60% of our customers will stop doing business after one service failure. Really? Which, looking at it from the opposite angle, only 40% of your business is going to give you a second chance. Wow. And that's really, that's really, you know, the age old saying, you only have one chance to make a first impression. Yes. It's, it's, it's fat. It's absolutely factual. Um, the, the good news in all of this is that 67% of these, um, what I will refer to as failures in service delivery, totally preventable. And oftentimes it doesn't necessarily include, a lot of business owners sometimes have the concern of, well, I don't wanna just give out a free meal because, because we failed to deliver. And reality is many customers, they just wanna be heard. Yes. They just wanna say, hey, I just want to let you know that you failed in this particular area. They're not necessarily looking for a free meal. Acknowledgement is everything. It's a hundred percent everything. And um, people, you know, they just they just want to be heard. They're 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 not necessarily looking for anything free. So it's just that simple in a lot of cases. You know, it's I I, I don't know that I would I don't know that I would say that it's just that simple, but it's certainly not difficult. Okay. <laughs> not, by, not, by, not by any, not by any stretch of the imagination. That's very interesting. Why did you? And I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, but why did you say I need to get in this industry and I need to go and help these businesses? You could very easily just let businesses do what businesses do and carry sure. on, you know, with your own thing. Sure. Why was this almost a calling for you? So I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit unusual in the sense that um, I love seeing people succeed. I. Absolutely, there's in, in my world, there's nothing better than seeing somebody succeed at whatever they do. And even if they're a competitor, I, I have absolutely no issue with it. I, I, I want everybody to succeed. So that's the reason that, uh, that, I, that I got into this primarily. I think that's wonderful. I don't think a lot of people have that much passion and care enough about other people and other mm -hmm. people's livelihood. And so yep. I think that really speaks a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so I got into the service industry at a, at a very young age. I was actually in high school. It was in it was in the early '90s. I was born and raised in Chicago, okay. and um, I went to high school out here in Paradise Valley. And my very first job was I was a dishwasher, and I share that story with others. And I'm like, well, you don't you don't really have any customers when you're a dishwasher. Totally false. You do have customers. You actually have toward two core groups of customers. 
number one, the, the cooks in the kitchen, they're, they're, they're relying upon having clean dishware. True. And of course, do you really want to be going to a restaurant and eating off of a dirty plate? Oh. <laughs> Gross, right? Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's, it's every, in every single role you have, you have customers. From there, I went to uh, Northern Arizona University where I studied hotel and restaurant management. Oh, okay. And uh, great program, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, started, started cooking. Uh, up at uh, NAU at, in one of the dining halls, loved it. Um, different set of customers, yes. of course, um, for sure. From there, I went into, uh, I had to get the career going and in Flagstaff, that's not always the easiest thing to do. Okay. So uh, I moved around quite a bit, back to Chicago, um, around the country, working for a company called Cardinal Health. Okay. They were a medical yes. surgical supply uh, dis distribution company. And that was a great fit for me because they had two core businesses. They had their base business of just, you know, you order a case of syringes, you get a case of syringes. They also had another uh, business model called ValueLink. And ValueLink was the service driven portion of their distribution model. So rather than saying, hey, I want a case of syringes, I need eight syringes delivered to the nurse's station on 3D. Mm. Oh, and by the way, I need you guys to actually hand deliver it and put it on the shelf for them. Wow. And I thought, great. Well, this is perfect. This is exactly what it's all about. Yes. So service is something that's, it's, it's something I've always, always been involved with. And then most recently transitioning into the home services industry. Mm -hmm. With uh, ProScale Services is a wonderful company. When, I, uh, w when we started, there were six of us. Um, there, were, there were two air conditioning guys. I was one of them. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Keith was another one, and that company was all about service. We always told the employees, we are a service company first, and we are heating and air conditioning, plumbing and electrical second. That's great. So it's, it's been a, a great ride. It makes a world of difference. People, like you said, want to be heard, mm -hmm. and they want to, they're spending their money with your business, and they want, not necessarily that you be appreciative, but that you care, that Correct. they chose you. There's right. so many other businesses that you can choose. Be thankful that they chose you or keep coming back to you. 100%. Yeah. That's wonderful. Loyalty is a two-way street. Yes. And, and that's really, really important to remember. Absolutely. What would you say sets you apart in your field? There's other folks who do the same thing sure. as you do, but what makes Scott <laughs> different? Sure. So um, believe it or not, whenever when, when, when I looked at starting this, of course, you're going to do a lot of market research on it and understand how saturated of a market am I entering? I was a very, I was actually shocked at how few companies actually specialize in right. exactly what I do. So that was when it's it's just there, there's so many signs that point to this is something that's needed. It's it's um, it's something that can really help businesses become even more successful. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd say that's the number one. The the pool is, is is very small, and number two, because of my diverse experience in so many different yes. industry sectors, I can I have experience in applying service models and leadership models to a number of, of different industries: hospitality, hotels and resorts, industrial, commercial, home services. I, 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 there's plenty of experience to be to be brought. Absolutely, to it sounds like it. If somebody is listening to this and they go, well, I could probably have my business evaluated, I guess, for sure. a better, you know, sure. there's a better word to use. What does that process look like? Do they just give you a call? It's it's very, it's it, it starts off with a phone call. 480-837-6000 okay. uh, is the best way to, to get in touch with me. And I'm very happy to just have a very simple discussion over the phone. Um, we can do whatever... The solutions that we provide to our customers are totally unique and they're totally built around the needs of the customer. Okay. So it can be as little as just, hey, I've got this one isolated occurrence that I'm trying to work through or, hey, we really, we need to look at this collectively <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and anywhere in between. Okay. And then do you service the whole valley or I do. You statewide? Yeah, actually we can do, um, so we're set up to provide services, uh, well, quite truthfully, anywhere throughout the world. With, oh. uh, with what we've learned during COVID, um, when it comes to assessment work, the United States is, is really the border. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to consulting and actual idea generation, service improvement, things like that, we can, we can perform that worldwide. 
That's great. Yeah. What was that phone number again so folks can write that down? 480-837-6000. So you have worked in the service industry, like you said, for decades, mm -hmm. which is wonderful because not everybody can do that. Right. <laughs> What advice would you give to other people, maybe some younger folks who are listening to this and kind of deciding where does that career path go? Maybe they are nervous about the service industry because not everybody is nice all the time. Yep. <laughs> so yep. give us some good advice. Yeah. The number one advice that I share with every single person is to listen. Listening is absolutely key. And there's a reason, a lot of people will say this, but there's a reason that we have two ears and one <laughs> mouth. and Listen to understand, don't listen to respond is, is another key piece okay. of information. So hmm. understanding is one of those things where it's been confused in today's society with agreement. Understanding and agreement are two very different things. And oftentimes when we run into uh, situations where we may not necessarily see eye to eye on certain topics, Great example, um, hey, I just ordered a meal and it arrived cold. Well, if you don't take the time to understand exactly what that issue is, there's no way that you're gonna be able to solve it. So you don't have to necessarily agree that the meal is cold, but you certainly have to understand what the perspective of your customer is. Hmm. And one of my professors in college shared with me a long time ago, he said, the customer is not always right. <laughs> but they are never wrong right and it's 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 all about um, all about perspective and we're in the business of helping other business owners turn those into winning success stories yes because you can't do everything right all the time you can't appease every single person that comes into your business correct and reality is you're not necessarily being measured on how you do things from the beginning, you're really being measured on how you correct things when they don't necessarily go to plan. And that that um, opp that opportunity right there is something that can really turn things around and, and get your business on track. I completely agree. I think that's a, a lot of value. Mm -hmm. You're very passionate about this. What would you say that you love most about Summer and Associates now that yeah. you're in a little bit different of a situation? Yeah. I, going back to what I said earlier, um, being able to see a business uh, thrive, being able to spend some time with me, get some really good ideas, get a very clear understanding on where they're at with their service delivery model, put changes into place, and then be able to, to witness that firsthand and, and from a front row seat. It's, it's by far my, my favorite part. Absolutely. Would you say that most businesses, it's a short time, they just have something they need to fix? For, or? for the most part. Okay. For, for the mo most part. And a, a lot of it revolves around training. Sure. It's, it, it's uh, the, the majority of it is just making sure that your staff is set up to handle or know who to go to to handle when, 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 when things just don't always go yeah. correctly. Yeah. I always ask businesses, if, do you have managers or do you have leaders? Hmm. And if you have managers, you need to get leaders. Absolutely. Because there's, there's, a, there's a difference. All right, Scott, so how did you end up in Arizona and why did you decide on Fountain Hills? Sure, so I was, uh, I was actually born and raised in Chicago okay. and went through grade school and junior high there. And my sister had gone to a boarding school. She's four years older than me. And I thought, well, after junior high, I wasn't, I wasn't fitting in the greatest. And I thought, well, you know, maybe boarding school is, a, is an option for me. So during that time, the internet really wasn't out there. So you had to write away to all these different schools. And I think I wrote away to about 60 of them. And you instigated this. I you did. wanted to go to boarding school. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. I wanted a change of scenery. <laughs> so got all this literature from all these different schools and this school uh, called Judson School, hmm. which is in Paradise Valley. It's right at the bottom of Mummy Mountain. Oh, okay. um, I just kind of figured, well, gosh, Arizona, that sounds wonderful. Don't have to shovel snow, <laughs> all the other reasons. So I ended up going to boarding school there, loved it. Uh, side note, ironically enough, since I was in the heating and air conditioning business, that school in their dorms and in their classrooms did not have air conditioning. Oh my gosh. So we were actually on a modified school year. And huh. we, we actually went to school on Saturdays. So our 
class, our, our school year really didn't begin until almost the end of September. And then by April, we were we were out because there was no air conditioning. Yeah. So I actually kind of liked it. Um, <laughs> great, great relationships were able to be built with people from all over the, all over the world. It was a school that specialized in uh, F1 studies, uh, specifically rodeo, Western riding, and ESL, English as a second language. So I was able to develop friendships with people from all over the world. Wow. My roommate my freshman year was off um, from Indonesia. And his parents dropped him off, first time in America, didn't speak any English. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and his name was Kent Hofker, great guy. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I came to Arizona. Yes. And then once I was here, like everybody else, I loved it. Decided, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? I don't like the heat, so we're going to look at college up at NIU. Mm -hmm. And ended up ended up going there to Fountain Hills. I had a, my freshman year dorm counselor. This is a great story. His name is Brett Hawkins. Okay. And Brett, if you were in really good behavior, like you weren't caught smoking or drinking or doing it <laughs> or doing any of this other nonsense, he would take you out on the weekends to go do a fun activity. Well, one of his activities is he would get a van full of us that had behaved for the week prior, and he would drive us out to Fountain Hills. Really? And it's you know Shay was two lanes coming yeah. out here and um it was this neat little little town and brett actually lives in fountain hills now and we've reconnected he comes to oktoberfest every year um it's it's just it's been a it's been a great uh it's been a great story my nickname in high school from one of those trips was goose and the reason i got that nickname is we uh, would bring a football down and we'd throw it around Fountain Park. Well, in those days, Fountain Park did not have a liner, concrete liner in it. Okay. So they had this muck that would oh. just come all the way up to the edge. <laughs> and when somebody throws you a football and you're running for it and you're not watching where you're going, <laughs> you go straight down. And and it was uh, it was a long ride back to school. So wow. That's that's kind of how I wound up in Fountain Hills. Um, like I said, you know, afterwards. You have to do some moving around, so it, it did take me out of town for a little bit. But we're back now for good. My parents uh, live in town. My sister oh, lives in Scottsdale. Oh, good. Uh, my wife's family is all down in Mesa, so we're we are we are here now permanently. And uh, speaking of my wife, we've been married for 17 years this year. Congratulations! Which is hard to believe that she's put up with me for this, for, for this long. <laughs> Maybe she should be the one in here doing the podcast. <laughs> but um, it, it, we've got two wonderful wonderful kids. My daughter Paige, who this fall, just in a couple short weeks, is actually going to be going to Fountain Hills High School, oh which we're gosh. very, very excited about. Wow. And then uh, my son Patrick, who goes to school in, uh, in in Phoenix. But That's wonderful. That's a little bit about me personally and kind of how I wound up in Fountain Hills. I think that's great. That's yeah. a good story. I love it. Thank you. Well, to wrap up, if you could share, because you're obviously very involved with the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. um, not only with your businesses, but being on the board of directors, what advice would you give to our chamber members or prospective chamber members? Yeah, this is actually firsthand advice from me. I'm glad you asked this question, because this is something that when I first got my membership, I was not doing. Um, use the membership. I cannot stress to you how important it is to use that membership. It's not just a piece of paper. Um, it, this membership represents uh, so many benefits. E even the base base level membership comes with an incredible mm -hmm. amount of, of benefit. Participate in the events. Get out there. I, I have a, a, one of my greatest friends in town operates a uh, insurance agent. Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna call him out, Scott Sloshberg. <laughs> and I, years ago, I asked Scott. I said, "You are at every single event. How much business are you actually recruiting?" Uh -huh. And he said, "You know, I'll be honest with you. At the actual event, not much. But reality is, he's out and he's visible. People know me people because of that. know that because 100%. of that. Yes. And and it's it's incredibly uh, it's incredibly smart business mm -hmm. to be out there." and to show that you are engaged in the community. So use that membership. There are wonderful events. The, there are success factor groups, which I was a participant in for a number of years. Great, great program. The Chamber Breakfast, the Five O'Clock Mixer, all of these programs, they're, they're all included in the membership. Yeah. So it's, it's very, just very, up. just show <laughs> up. That's all, that's literally all you have to do is just show up. Um, I 
kind of equate your chamber membership as a tool. It's, it's a tool in your repertoire. The chamber is the tool that helps you be successful. Mm -hmm. We can't do the work for you. Right. That's not, the, that's not what we're here for. But what we are here for is to help you get that work done. And that's exactly what a tool does. Absolutely. That's wonderful advice. Thank you so much. You're Thank you welcome. for all the information that you shared with you us bet. today. Happy to do so. Thank you so much, and that will wrap up episode 60 of FountainCast. And once again, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to share our show with friends, neighbors, clients, anyone in your network, and please be sure to like, rate, and review our show wherever you listen to your podcasts. A new feature of our podcast is you can now watch the video on the Chamber's YouTube channel. Scott Summer is extremely involved in Fountain Hills and the business community. Not only does he give his time volunteering, but he is invested in you and your business. Give Scott a call to see how he can expand and perfect your business today. Now for upcoming Chamber events. Join us tonight for a singing competition like no other. The FHYCE Karaoke Contest at Bachelor's Pad Barbecue at 6 p.m. Pre-sale tickets for Oktoberfest are already on sale. The monthly 5 o'clock mixer on August 9th at Euro Pizza. Finally, Holiday Classics Info Meeting on the 15th and 18th. Be sure to check the Chamber's website for more details on all of our events. As today's host, Jill Hayslip, thank you, Fountain Hills, for continuing to be the best community. I don't like surprises. <laughs> hey, Betsy and Chuck, we're just hanging out, just doing our thing. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to add this to the blooper <laughs> reel at the end, so just be prepared for that. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. From uh, schools, and I did just that, and hang on, we got to break it. I'm sweating. <laughs> 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 I'm get some paper towels. <laughs> it is hot in here. It's only 79 degrees, Scott. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Quick, didn't it? it oh, did. why is it on heat? Cool. Black